So today I want to talk about robot war dogs being equipped with ARs. Earlier this year, I had talked about how New York City had unveiled an unarmed robotic dog known as the Digidog. And while that was dystopian enough as it stood, when they made the video talking about the Digidog, I asked about how long it would take for someone to equip a similar robotic dog with an armed weapon. Well now, unfortunately, thanks to Ghost Robotics and Sword International, we have the answer to that question. And yes, this is indeed the uh, dystopian reality that we are living in. People are struggling to survive for one reason or another. There's never enough funding for people when it comes to basic care and needs. But the U.S. Army and Air Force have the funding to contract companies to create a dog-like robot with the capacity to carry a rifle on its back. So let's learn about this monstrosity that we've created. We have here that robot dogs now have ARs mounted on their backs. Robot dogs have been, uh, been met with equal parts fascination and fear by the public, but their utility for military applications is becoming undeniable. Now, first and foremost, when we talk about this, the fascination that some people may have for this is not exactly a good thing. I think most people with common sense who understand how these type of things are going to be used fear them for a good reason, especially when the U.S. military is the ones in control of them and what that will mean for imperialism and for the wider issue when this eventually gets in the hands of police departments. But we have on screen the actual robot with the sword defense uh, gun mounted on the back. And I want to just take a moment before I go into the full extent of this and compare it to something that I compared the Digidog to last time to just show off how this has been brought up in sci-fi dystopia for years. This is the Fenrir from Metal Gear Solid, and on screen you're looking at two variants of it, one with a chainsaw and one with a railgun. And unfortunately, the more I look at this gun on the back of this robot dog, the more I see the railgun variant being an absolute reality in our lives today. It's only going to be a matter of time until we add the type of armor and plating that would be in this type of science fiction. And this has been something that dystopian novels have talked about for years. The idea of some sort of robot or mechanical hound that would end up harassing and targeting people and being used as a weapon of war. Now, again, looking back at this, uh, this robotic dog that we're looking at, um, I think you can see the comparisons that once you added some sort of plating or armor to the outside of this that would protect it even more, that it would look quite similar to what I just showed you with the Fenrir. Now, going into the article itself, Ghost Robotics and Sword International have teamed up to create a rifle-toting robot dog called the Special Purpose Unmanned Rifle or SPUR. The system adds a 6.5 millimeter Creedmoor rifle from SWORD to one of Ghost Robotics' quadrupedal unmanned ground vehicles, or QUGVs. The SPUR made its debut on the show floor for the Association of U.S. Army's main annual convention in Washington, D.C., which opened yesterday. This appears to be the first example of one of these unmanned systems with an actual weapon mounted to it. So yeah, we're seeing the first example, this happened a couple of days ago, where we're getting to see an actual weapon mounted on something the equivalent of a Digidog. And the unfortunate reality here is that this is going to be the norm moving forward. We're going to see a lot more of this type of dystopian reality where we see more of these uh, drones, these robotic tools, these unmanned ground vehicles as they're being called, being equipped with something equivalent, whether it be this type of AR, or some sort of alternative system. So when we learn a little bit more about it, we know that the exact configuration of the gun is not fully known, such as how much ammunition it will hold, but we are aware of the fact that Ghost Robotics has said that the spur can be instructed remotely to chamber the first round from an unloaded state, as well as clear the chamber and safe the gun. Meaning that from a distance, you're able to see this robotic dog essentially equip the weapon to be ready to fire and load it into the chamber or to remove the bullet from the chamber, meaning you can arm and disarm it within a moment's notice just by giving it a remote instruction. On top of that, uh, there's a lot of info on here about the type of caliber of the weapon, and I'm not really going to go into that because honestly at this point having any type of weapon on the back of a robotic dog is disturbing to me at the very least. The idea that it's going to be used for the type of things it's going to be used for is a much bigger issue. Ghost Robotics says that Spur is capable of precision fire out of uh, out to 1,200 meters 
or nearly 3,940 feet. Just so you have some sort of understanding of that, especially if you are from the US, that is three quarters of a mile. This thing, this monstrosity that we have created can have precision fire up to the point of three quarters of a mile. And just to put that into perspective, three quarters of a mile would take an average person walking at a decent speed, about three miles per hour, only 15 minutes. So we're talking about what it takes 15 minutes of walking time. This robot could hit somebody from that distance and target them and kill them. That is the power of what this unmanned uh, drone is going to do. And that's what we've created here. This unmanned system already features impressive stabilization capacity simply as a result of its quadrupedal design. So on top of that, uh, they have over 2,000 calculations happening in the leg per second, which means that if somebody shoves them or kicks them or knocks them down, they are actually capable of getting back up and continuing their uh, task. And that means that disarming them is going to be quite difficult because not only could you not get within three quarters of a mile of this thing without it targeting you, but on top of that, if you did actually manage to kick it over, then, well, it's going to get back up and it's going to keep coming. It's created to be essentially unstoppable. And that's what we're talking about here. You literally have to scramble its targeting system in some way in order for anybody to be safe from this. The system is designed in such a way as to work to ensure it can keep functioning even if various onboard sensors it can use to help move around fail. So on top of that, even if its sensors fail, it will find a way around it. They've actually made it capable of functioning, quote unquote, completely blind, meaning that even if all of its sensors go down, it can more or less feel its way around to try to maneuver and can maneuver up and down stairs in a such a way. The reason we do that is because if a warfighter or mining company, if anybody is using our robot, this robot had better operate 99.99% of the time. So yeah, we can't feed people. We cannot provide services to people. There's no way we can provide universal health care for people. We can't solve systemic racism. We can't solve all the other issues that are, you know, in our societies. But what we can do is create a robot that can't be knocked over, that can be bought by a warfighting organization or a mining company, and can essentially be equipped with an AR onto its back. That's what we're dealing with in these times and in this reality. And I want to know exactly what they are going to use this for outside of military operations. For example, if a mining company were to have this, theoretically, this could be used as a very important tool for mining companies to be able to, say, dig through an area or scramble through an area in order to find precious resources before sending humans in. And in that regard, it could theoretically have a potential to do good. But we've seen too much in history where companies like a mining company will hire some sort of guard or, you know, call on the military or the National Guard in order to defend their ability to enforce workers to work. So I'm picturing a mining company equipping such an AR onto the back of this device in order to ensure that people are working and not providing any sort of the service or any sort of protection for people that we'd like to see happen. Now, moving forward a little bit more, it seems likely that Attack or a similar piece of software, this is the Android Team Awareness Kit known as Attack, uh, that it would this piece of software could be used to enable a human to aim at targets and engage with them with the robot's 6.5 millimeter rifle. The Air Force also had uh, discussed potentially operating QUGVs remotely from centralized command facilities via virtual reality headsets. So there's two options available. Either the person in charge of it will be able to run the device and will be able to control and select a target via the targeting system, or you'll be able to remotely control it from a command facility that will allow people to essentially put on a, a virtual reality headset and treat it like it's a video game. And that's really disturbing when we don't talk about the amount of propaganda that is built into the type of video games that the US military supports, such as Call of Duty and a number of others, where they put a lot of the most modern technologies and allow the uh, gaming companies to put in all of the most recent weapons that are contracted by the US essentially as a propaganda tool in order to recruit people and to make it seem like war is just a video game. And now we're actually seeing the flip side of that, where war is essentially being turned into a video game. 
And we have also here that the spur could also have some degree of additional autonomy. Yes, we're giving an AR that's being equipped to the back of a robot dog autonomy. Now or in the future, potentially employing artificial intelligence driven capabilities to at least detect and quote, lock on to potential threats, even if an operator ultimately has to give the approval to start shooting. Sighting systems for small arms that offer these kinds of capabilities are available on the open market right now. So yeah, it's perfectly feasible that within the next year or two, we might see these type of things being uh, unleashed on some sort of uh, territory that the US wants to engage in war with. And we're going to see these artificial intelligence driven drones basically autonomously operating. And maybe, maybe we'll be lucky enough to have it in a situation where a human will ultimately have to be the dictator of whether or not the things start shooting. But we're quite capable of creating a system where it starts shooting on its own and can determine targets. And I'm waiting for the disasters that will happen to that. The amount of people that will be gunned down and mowed down and selected as targets, whether they are targets or not. And the fact of the matter is, this will be used for US imperialism in the future. You think getting out of Afghanistan was the end of all of that imperialism? No, no, no. This will continue in some way, shape, or form. There will be another country that the US targets at some point. The forever wars will have to continue. Now, this will be able to go into tight spaces and will be able to extend the range uh, in the future. So basically, what they're arguing is that this will have military implications of being able to go into tight spaces to find targets, as well as being able to extend the range of how far a person could normally um, engage a threat. And unfortunately, that is going to mean using these high... Um, strength weapons that are going to be able to mow down people again from three quarters of a mile away. So yeah, we live in a world where people are struggling to survive, where some people are struggling to make rent, some people are struggling to eat, some people don't have access to medication, yet we've managed to invent a robot that can potentially automate its targets uh, and kill with precision from a distance of three quarters of a mile. This is the dystopian reality that we've chosen. If this technology has to exist, why couldn't we just use it to save lives? Why couldn't we use it for paramedic purposes or for precision rescue during a disaster? If you have a natural disaster like a hurricane hit, you could send in this type of dog in order to locate people and to pull survivors out and even perform some of the basic tenets of maybe CPR or other necessary procedures. But unfortunately, we've chosen to use it as a tool of war, as we usually do. We could also use this as a farming implement or tool to automate farming to help with food production. This could help discover patches of ground that are best available or the least used in order to protect topsoil and do all sorts of other techniques. I don't know the capabilities, but there's so many other positive possibilities that I'm sure other organizations could come up with to create positive utility for humans. And instead, again, we are creating weapons of war used to target and destroy lives. We go the route that every single piece of science fiction media has warned us about from the beginning, whether that be Fahrenheit 451's Mechanical Hound, the Fenrir and Metal Gear Solid that I talked to you about, the Metalhead and Black Mirror. As we attach weapons to this robot's head, we are creating this dystopian science fiction reality and we're starting to live in it. The problem is, I can't even say I'm surprised at this point. And on some level, that really bothers me as well. This should be shocking. This should be awful in quite the literal sense of that word. But the problem is it's not. It's not surprising in the least. Because when it's come to the US military, when it's come to the way that budgets have been spent, the fact is this is the new normal. And it has been for quite a while. And with now the ranks of the military, this will definitely be used as a tool of imperialism. And what I'm waiting for is the time that police forces get to have the hand-me-downs and get to have similar technologies. And all of a sudden, these are going to be uh, roaming the street where you're going to have some sort of rubber bullet, you know, as a non-violent solution or taser-based weaponry equipped to similar dogs, again, run by the police departments. And this is what they'll use in order to target protesters and target people who are just trying to dissent against what the government is saying. The ethics of this robot should be something that, as a society, 
that we seriously question and get angry about. Between the drones, the robotic dogs, the other forms of killer robots that we're developing, and autonomous weaponry that are being developed, we need to seriously reconsider the ramifications of the automation of war and what that will mean for us as a society and for us as a world. So with that said, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and the bell for notifications. You can follow me on Twitter and check out my Discord in the description down below. My name is Anarchist Terra, and I thank you for watching.